Whether they involve the star making a fool of themselves via unexpected improvisation, or a director taking blunt honesty to uncomfortable levels, the following entries serve as a perfect reminder of just how ruthless and insane the world of movie auditions can really be. Who'd be an actor, eh? I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 8 movie auditions you would not believe. Number 8. Ryan Gosling was once cut off by a casting director's phone In a hilarious art-imitating life moment, Ryan Gosling found himself cruelly disrupted by a casting director midway through an undisclosed audition. The story goes that Gosling was completely pouring his heart and soul into his work, and had put on a convincing show of the part in question. But when the call came, this casting director could not wait for his brilliance to finish. A couple of years later, Emma Stone's character in Damien Chazelle's La La Land had to work her way through an audition with the same sequence of events taking place on screen. You get the feeling Gosling could have had an input in the scene, as the two stories match up too closely to be a coincidence. The joke looks to be on said casting director though, as that rude interruption of Gosling may have cost them the chance of discovering one of the finest actors of his generation. Number 7. Jake Gyllenhaal was the worst actor Peter Jackson had ever seen Any actor will tell you that one of the key elements in ensuring any audition goes well is preparation. If you school yourself on what is required of the role in question, then you stand a good chance of being considered should the meeting go well. Nobody highlights that need for prep more than Jake Gyllenhaal in his audition for the part of Frodo in the iconic Lord of the Rings trilogy. Gyllenhaal had entered the room unaware that he was supposed to be equipped with an English accent for the part. He tried to wing it and stumbled through the reading before Peter Jackson apparently exclaimed, You are the worst actor I have ever seen. It was a hard lesson to learn. But Gyllenhaal has gone on to star in multiple mega movies over the years. Sadly, we still haven't got the chance to see him with pointed ears and gigantic hairy feet though, yet. Number 6. The Force Was Not Strong With Eddie Redmayne even when an actor has scaled the heights of the industry, even nabbing a Best Actor Academy Award, you can still be asked to read for a role before you were formally offered it. Eddie Redmayne found himself in this exact predicament, fresh off of an Oscar win for his turn as Stephen Hawking in The Theory of Everything. Kylo Ren in the new Star Wars adventure The Force Awakens was the role up for grabs, and Redmayne knew how big an opportunity this really was, to his detriment. He described the audition as catastrophically bad. The story goes that Redmayne went into the room and attempted to read the part in a variety of ways, only to be met with, got anything else, Eddie? From the legendary casting director, Nina Gold. Redmayne agreed that they should part on this one and confessed it was a childhood dream crushed. He then went on to lead the new JK Rowling excursion into the pre-Harry Potter wizarding world, Fantastic Beasts while the role of Kylo Ren went to the expertly cast Adam Driver. Number 5. January Jones Polis Pole Dance It's hard enough to perform something off the cuff in an audition, without being asked to demonstrate the action without a pivotal piece of equipment there to assist you. You wouldn't ask a chef to show you how to cook a steak without the meat, would you? This is the situation that January Jones found herself in early in her career. She had been brought into the room for the now cherished romantic comedy Coyote Ugly, Large portions of the film see the cast of ladies dancing and teasing their male punters, suspended high above on the bar and tables in the club. Jones, with this in mind, was asked to display what talent she had for performing to a crowd in the form of a pole dance, without a pole. Jones recounted the situation as awful and was criticized for having no rhythm by the producer. What a dick. She considered packing it in there and then, but showed resilience and belief in herself by sticking at it, and now holds credits in the X-Men franchise and the TV series Mad Men. She done good. Number 4. Daniel Radcliffe Should Not Gossip Daniel Radcliffe solemnly swore he was up to no good the moment he chose to gossip about someone in the industry who has remained nameless in one of his auditions. It's one of the unwritten laws of the industry that you should never badmouth someone in public, never mind in an audition room, as you never know who is listening and what consequences your words could have on your career further down the line. 
For Radcliffe to openly denounce an industry worker in a room of potential employers is silly enough, but when another person entered the room, his fate was sealed. He finished the gossip and followed up by referring to the newcomer with, The person I'm talking about is a very good friend of yours, isn't he? To which they responded, Yeah. Yep, that'll do it. Radcliffe had to work through the awkwardness in the room and only had himself to blame, to be honest. All power to him for owning up to the mistake, but it's a lesson that someone who has been in the industry since he was 11 should have probably learned by now. Number 3. Gary Oldman's Apparent Man on the Moon Audition You've likely heard many a tale about actors doing whatever it takes to get themselves in the all-important room for a tantalizing audition. And then there's what happened when Gary Oldman decided he wanted to audition for the part of Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon. According to the introduction written by Larry Karaszewski for the film's screenplay, the legendary British actor pestered the feature's casting director, one of its stars, Danny DeVito, and director Milos Forman over the part, claiming to be the best actor for the job. Not wanting to offend the well-known star, Alban was sent a script, only to complain that his agent never passed it on to him. The pages were then sent directly to his home, which then eventually resulted in the team receiving a peculiar 30-minute tape of someone in makeup that looked unlike Alban or Kaufman just rambling on. In the end, it was revealed that this Alban was actually an imposter. Struggling to break into the acting industry, with the legit Oldman actually being completely unaware of the project. God loves a tryer though, right? Number 2. Meryl Streep isn't pretty enough for a giant ape If this were to happen today, you better believe the casting director in question would be up for the chop. Not because Meryl Streep is now arguably the greatest actor on the planet, which she probably is, more because the decision to not cast an actor because they aren't, and I quote, pretty enough, is about as superficial and just gross as it gets. The legendary Streep, 27 at the time, lived this nightmare and then some when she was labelled in Italian as ugly by Dino De Laurentiis, who was casting a remake of King Kong. Unfortunately for De Laurentiis, he wasn't aware of Streep's fluidity in the language, and she called him out for the comments before leaving with you're just one opinion in a sea of thousands, and I'm off to find a kinder tide. De Laurentiis' King Kong was a total flop, and the grace that Streep handled the situation with further reinforces her untouchable legacy as an actor and an all-round badass. Number 1. Bill Nye Looks Good in Heels Bill Nye is known primarily for his weighty roles in some truly great movies like Pirates of the Caribbean's notable octo-villain Davy Jones and Love Actually's fading rock star Billy Mack. It will give respite to actors everywhere to know that however ridiculous or embarrassing you feel your audition went, it will probably never be quite up to these standards of out there. When auditioning for an unnamed feature at 46 years old, Nye was urged to wear, in his words, tight hipster loon pants, 4-inch fake alligator platform heels, eye makeup and hair extensions. Couple this with a rendition of Deep Purple Smoke on the Water, and it's probably understating things to say this was an audition for the ages. Nye stated after all that you really just wanted to go home, but nevertheless this audition did not derail his career, and if anything makes us love him even more. And that's our list. Know of any other movie auditions people would not believe? Let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and find some more incredible articles just like the one this video right here is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.